All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about the high ready versus the low ready. So let's go. All right, so normally most videos when they talk about the high ready and the low ready, it's always a verse. Just as, you know, I hinted at in the title of this, high ready versus low ready. But it's not exactly which is best, but more importantly and more correctly, it's when is best. They're both great techniques. And hands down, uh, as many will say, the low ready is faster. Well, the low ready is faster in a few certain instances. In others, the high ready, uh, which is butt stock just under the armpit and between the, your torso and your elbow. And the front sight, or if you have a gas block, no front sight. And the muzzle is about eye level. Uh, this is how I roll with the high ready. In some instances, this is faster. That's why in a lot of the videos I've previously made, you see me roll with a high ready. And that's because dynamic movement, high ready is the key. But let's put it to test. Uh, in the next clip, you're going to see high ready versus low ready static shooting. And hands down, low ready is faster because when you're rolling with the low ready, it's just one movement up and you're on the gun where a high ready, you've got to push the gun out to clear your armpit and then pull it in to break the shot. So it's two movements. But let's check out the clips. High ready versus low ready, static shooting. I'm gonna do two runs of each. All right, this is the high ready versus low ready. Now it's not about which technique is best. It's actually when is the best time to employ it. We're talking on a flat range setting or outside of our structure. We're not talking CQB because that's also based on team movement. So we're gonna start out with a few simple drills. Basically the up drill from the low ready and pushing up from the high ready on a steel plate at about 15 yards. I'm running some frangible ammunition. So let's compare the times. Let's go. And easy hit, 0.78. Let me pick it up with the low ready a little bit. And a 0.74. All right, now let's do the high ready. That takes two movements. That's a push pull. So static, it's gonna be slower. I'm gonna try and go as fast as I can. Probably not gonna match the low ready time. One, one, one. And a one, one, two. So hands down, as you just saw, you know, static, low ready is faster. Again, one movement, you're just bringing the gun up and you're breaking the shot. By the way, this is not low ready. This is hanging out, eating snacks. This is a resting patrol position. This is low ready. You're looking just over your optic and you're scanning your sector, okay? Again, not low ready. This is relaxed. You can call it a relaxed, you know, low ready or patrol position. This is low ready, looking just over your optic. Uh, it's also been called the depressed muzzle. That's in special forces where you're just depressing the muzzle down and you're watching your sector. And again, high ready. I like to keep, in this case, my front sight post at about eye level. And that way, as I'm scanning, I can just push the gun out and bring it in right on target. Now, in this next clip, you're going to see where I think high ready shines. And that is dynamic movement over three uh, paces. So if it's beyond three paces, if I have to move 10, 12, 15, 100, two miles, 10 miles sprint, I'm gonna roll with a high ready. And that's because you can pump your arms more effectively uh, than at the low ready. And also, as you'll see in the video, as I'm getting ready to stop and shoot, it's easier for me to drive the gun out and pull it in. But without spoiling the clips, I'm gonna do four runs of each, and then I'm going to total the times and give the average and see which one is faster that I can do on a steel target at about 15 yards. So let's check it out. Low ready, dynamic movement. I'm gonna to sprint to the 10 yard cone. Let's see what I got. Three, four, six, let me pick it up. Three ninety. All right, let's try that high ready. Three, five, eight. Three, three, four. Three, 
Let's do it again. We're ready. Three five seven. Three nineteen. Three thirteen. So as you saw, if you average up all the times, uh, hands down, high ready is faster. Now you can say it's marginally faster, but in a gun match, those tenths of a second, you know, they do add up and they are faster. Now in the context of CQB, you know, that's a whole nother realm, but I want to touch on it because it's important. Now in special forces, you know, originally I was trained in the low ready for CQB and really for all carrying methods. And while in 5th Special Forces Group, about 2005, we started to go to a place called Direct Action Resource Center. Uh, the acronym is DARC, uh, Darcy for short for the graduates, uh, taught by Rich Mason. And he taught us the high ready, which is the one I still use to this day. Again, buttstock between the elbow and your midsection, front sight post at about eye level or gas block muzzle area. Uh, he started to teach that simultaneously in 3rd Special Forces Group around late 2005, 2006. Because of their combat experience in Baghdad, they started to adopt their high ready, which is basically the same thing because they were finding out the low ready was not getting it done in CQB. So between 5th and 3rd Special Forces Group, about 2005-ish, we started to adopt or be trained on the high ready. And to late 2006, 2007, it actually became doctrine and SOP at our main CQB schoolhouse at Fort Bragg, Range 37, where I taught for about two years. So it's officially incorporated into Special Forces training to this day. Guys are taught to roll with a high ready, uh, specifically for the two, three, four, five, six man. Number one man, obviously it makes more sense when you're rolling into a room to be at the low ready. But for the two, three, four, and five and beyond, if we're rolling six man stack, it's actually faster to roll with a high ready. And I'm gonna explain that uh, in this next photo. All right, so in this photo here, this is a four sequence photo. I'm going to be, I am the number three man in this photo. And as you can see, the number one and number two man are doing the classic, you know, peel off left and right as soon as they cross the threshold into the room to clear their corners. And you can see my muzzle up at the high ready. Now, the reason why the high ready is faster for the two, three, four, and five guy is because it's much easier and faster to drop your muzzle down as guys peel off to the left and right than it is to bring up around their body. Body. So if you noticed in the sequential pictures, uh, by the second, third, and by the you know, fourth photo, I clearly have my muzzle down, pointed into the room, ready to shoot, and I'm not even in the room. If you roll with the low ready, you've got to wait, and you've got to wait for their whole body to clear before you can bring your gun up. Whereas when guys turn corners into a room, if you notice, they lean into it, and they lean into it with their head, and that starts creating a gap that you can drop the muzzle down into and be ready to shoot even before you get into the room. So as a two, three, four, and so on guys that flow into the room, it's a lot faster and it's proven that guys are faster on the trigger, dropping the muzzle down as guys peel off to the left and right into the room and are able to engage threats than having to wait for their whole body to clear left and right and try and get their muzzle up. Another advantage of rolling with the high ready in CQB is, you know, if you roll with a low ready, and you flow into a room and see you bump into an assailant or an aggressor, nine times out of 10, your gun is now stuck between you and the bad guy. And the only thing you have to work with with the low ready if you didn't have a chance to get your gun up is you got your butt stock if you don't have a super tight sling to try and fight. But more often than not, you're now stuck uh, to fight the assailant and make space with this gun between you and the assailant slung to your body. The beauty of the high ready is you flow into a room, you crash into an assailant. Now, nine times out of 10, you have your muzzle. If you bump into the guy between you and the assailant, so you can muzzle strike him, uh, shoot from retention, or you can just start bashing and spearing him to make space. So the high ready in CQB is a lot more aggressive, I think, especially for super close contact shooting. If you can't spear the gun all the way out, you can always shoot from retention, either above the shoulder or in the armpit. Uh, you can't do that with the low ready at all. You're stuck with this at the low ready and you're stuck trying to get your gun up. Another critical advantage with the low ready, or should I say a critical advantage with the high ready is, 
is a habit a lot of guys have, especially novices going into CQB is, is their eyes always want to follow the dot. So you'll see in a lot of old photos, as guys drop to the low ready, they start just staring down at the ground as opposed to head up and looking around. And this is a big problem. In a lot of old photos, especially from the mid 2000s, late 90s, you see whole stacks resting outside of a door, muzzles down with their head all tracking the sights. Uh, you definitely don't want that. So the high ready facilitates your head up looking around because again, your, your sight's not even there for your eyes to lock on. But more importantly, your eyes kind of naturally want to follow your muzzle and front sight block. And it becomes very instinctive and very intuitive that when you're facing, say, an unknown area, you start dropping that muzzle a little bit, ready to shoot. And as you're turning and scanning around, if you do see, you know, when you're a good guy or when your partner's in the stack, it becomes very instinctive. You start taking the gun to a full 90 and then dropping it back down. So if I have a buddy right here, I can go to full 90, drop back down. So yes, there's a potential for flagging, but I think there's a less potential for flagging with the high ready because it becomes very instinctive to start rolling with a gun at the 90 than it is, you know, just rolling at the low ready because guys get lazy and they start flagging, you know, knees and, and legs and feet. Now, catastrophically wise, obviously if you're rolling with the high ready and you have an, you know, an AD or an ND, you know, it's going to go up into the shoulders and head. So way more dangerous in terms of if you have an AD, what that bullet can do to a partner in your team. But I think the chances are way reduced by rolling with the high ready because I think it just becomes natural instinct with training and practice to start rolling at the 90 when you start sweeping your fellow teammates. Again, you drop down the, when you're facing the unknowns and when you're turning, you go to the full 90. Very instinctive, very intuitive. Now in this clip here, you know, I talked about high ready being great for a long dynamic movement. Generally, I use it over three steps. Now, if I'm in a match and then I need to move, say, under three steps, around three or four steps, I'm gonna keep the gun mounted, except I'm gonna roll with a depressed muzzle. It's a lot faster to stay mounted and move those three steps than totally dropping down to a real low ready or going to the high ready and having to remount the gun uh, for three steps. So generally around three steps, especially in a match, I will just drop the muzzle, look right at the optic, and that way when I stop, the gun's right there again. Let's check out the clip where I demonstrate it right here. One, four, seven. Let me do that one more time. One, nine, eight. And you should probably see now, if I come off the gun with a high ready, three paces and under, it should, will take longer. Two, two, three. All right, one more thing I'd also like to point out, and that is with the high ready, is a lot of units do not use the high ready because they're worried about in training of flagging, you know, instructors up on the catwalk as guys are clearing through the house. If you're letting a training limitation affect your tactics, I think you're dead wrong. This has been a proven technique, proven in combat with special operations. Uh, U.S. Army Special Forces, we've been rolling with this since about 2005. And as far as I'm aware of, we've never had an instance of a soldier ADing up into the catwalk and hitting somebody up above. Uh, what's always been echoed in Special Forces, it's the job of the guy who's up on the catwalk observing training to move out of the way of the muzzles if he doesn't feel safe. So again, if your unit's excuse for not rolling with the high ready is, is not safe because guys up on the catwalk are gonna get flagged, uh, your unit is dead wrong. Again, this is a proven method, proven in combat. SF guy has been rolling with it again since about 2005, very effective. So don't let training limitations affect your tactics. So to wrap it up, again, it's not high ready versus low ready, which is best. It's high ready versus low ready when is best, meaning when is the best time to apply it. Hopefully this video helped. Uh, now go out, hit the range, try the high ready and the low ready and see when and where it works best for you. Again, I'm Jeff Gerwich. Thanks for watching.